Hey everyone, CNC Keith here. I've been getting some questions on how to use Centroid's Acorn CNC12 Intercon conversational programming software that comes with the Acorn CNC control kit. Well, that's pretty easy. All you got to do is hit F5 CAM and then F1 Intercon, and it brings up the last program that Intercon was running. And uh, if I wanted to do a new program, you just hit File, New, and type in a name. I ask you to fill in a few questions here on the right. I'm just going to put my initials in. And I'm going to give it a stock diameter of 2 inches. And that's 2 inches in diameter and 4 inches length. I'm going to tell it how I have it chucked and where my Z face coordinate is. And I'm going to hit Accept. Now you see on the uh, left hand side of the screen these are blocks. There's block 1 and block 2 and I'm in between 1 and 2 right now and it's saying selected operation to an insert. And down at the bottom it says what do you want to do? A line, an arc, a drill, tap, thread, profile, turn, groove, cut off, and other. There's all these great things in here you can do. Well, I just want to turn down this 2 inch stock to a 1 and a half inch diameter for an inch and a half long. So I'm going to pick the turning cycle. And on the right hand side of the screen, all the information that Intercon needs to create a turning cycle, you have to answer these questions. That's why it's called conversational. Conversational means it asked me a question, I answered a question. So it's saying, hey, the first question is turning type. And if I hit the space bar, there's two things here, and I need to pick which one. Diameter is the one I'm going to leave it on. Next question is starting diameter. Well, starting diameter, remember my stock's two inches and I want to, go, want to take it down to an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do is type in that it's a little bit bigger than two inches. And that way the very first pass will not actually touch the work. It's just kind of a good way to do things. Ending diameter, I wanted it an inch and a half. Where's my starting Z? I'm going to start a little bit beyond the Z0. And then I'm going to finish at minus one and a half. And this is just going to be a straight turn. So if I don't know what any of these, maybe one of these questions, I'm not sure what it means. What I'm going to do is hit F5 help. And on the left hand side of the screen, you're going to get a graphic. And as I arrow key up and down the questions here, you'll see it highlights that particular part of the graphic. So I'm not doing any tapering, so I'm leaving those at zero. Depth of cut. Man, this is a piece of plastic, so I'm going to take off an eighth of an inch per pass as it's machining down from that two inch diameter down to that one and a half. Then it asked me if I want to get rid of the help graphic, just hit F5 again. And then it asked me what tool. Well, I'm going to hit uh, F2 tool, and I could pick whatever tool I wanted here. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick tool one. It's just a general turning tool. And next question is rough speed rate. Well, you can. Uh, have two different feed modes here, and F1 changes it from feed per minute to feed per rev. Well, I do not have an encoder hooked up to this machine, so I'm going to set it on feed per minute, because if you do feed per rev, it needs to have an encoder on it to tell it the revs, and so that the control then feeds at the right rate that is actually matching the spindle of what it's actually doing. So that's an awesome feature, and that's the way all lays should be used, but I'm bench testing here. I don't actually have an encoder hooked up to my motors right now. So I'm going to switch that to feed per minute. Same with the rough spindle speed. There's spindle mode. You can do pure RPM or constant surface speed. Well, again, <clears throat> I don't have an inverter hooked up right now. So I'm just going to hook straight RPM is what I'm doing. So I'm going to tell it how many RPM. I'm going to go 800 RPM. Finish pass amount. Well, I'm going to leave two thousandths for the finish pass. And you can pick a different tool or the same tool to do the finish pass work. I'm going to go ahead and just pick tool two. And then same question here. It gives you the ability to change the feed rate and the spindle speed for the finish pass. I'm going to switch that over to feed per minute. And uh, I'm just going to type in like four here. And I'm gonna, I forgot to put the feed per minute in back here in a rough six for roughing. And I'm going to switch constant surface speed to pure RPM. We'll slow that down for the finish pass. And so once you answer these questions, all you got to do at any point in time is you can hit graph to see how your work's going. So the dotted gray line is the two inch diameter, four inch long piece that's chucked. The yellow lines is the center line of the tool. The red lines are rapids. 
and it's showing me here taking the passes out an eighth of an inch at a time and then the doubled lines here are the finish pass so if you don't know what if you can't figure out what one of these questions is sometimes it's just really easy just to change um, the number and hit graph so I change that to 50 thousandths now look now we have multiple passes here and these passes are 50 thousandths right, apart so it's pretty easy to use the graphics and just change the number and hit graph and you can figure out pretty quick what it's up to and what it's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and change that back to 50 thousandths. So once you get all your uh, questions here answered on the right, you hit F10 accept and it takes that information and it stuffs it into block number two. There's block two. And now it's asking me, well, what else do you want to do? So maybe I want to do some other operations. Well, if I don't want to do any other operations, all I do is hit Escape, and then I hit Post. And guess what? It creates the G code from the information that I typed in, takes me back to the main screen, and I can hit Cycle Start. And there we go. We're running the job. We're creating that particular part. Pretty darn easy. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Escape. And I'm going to go to the Run menu, and I'm going to turn Runtime Graphics on, and we're going to run the part program again so you can see it. And here we go. The little triangle there is the tip of my tool, and you can see it. Right now you can probably hear my stepper motors that are sitting on the bench moving in the background, and it is turning that particular part. And I can turn the trail off here, F9, so the screen doesn't get messy. So this is pretty slick. It's a very quick, easy way to create turning programs. A lot of turning programs are pretty straightforward, so the conversational is very powerful. I find myself only going to CAD CAM when I have some really crazy stuff going on, because um, you can do some beautiful profile cycles inside of intercon lines and arcs with chamfering and radiuses and all that that you could do on a CAD CAM system, but you do it right here, and every time uh, you hit post on intercon, it spits out perfect G-code, and it just runs, and it just works. So there's no post-processor craziness to deal with. So I highly recommend that y'all try to learn how to use Intercon. And inside of Intercon, <coughs> excuse me, if you hit File, then Load, there's a whole bunch of sample programs that come with the Acorn CNC 12 software. Let's check them out. These programs right here, Demo, Face, Groove, Pawn, Sample Part, let's just grab that Pawn program. I can just load that program, and there, there it is on the left-hand side. All There's all the blocks that make up the Pawn program. So if you're curious of how that works, all you got to do is hit Enter, and on the right-hand side of the screen is all the information that we use to create that. And I can scroll down through all these arcs and lines. These, this is the, in the side of a profile cycle here that define that Pawn shape. And you can study this and see how this works, which is really cool. So use those programs. I'm going to go load again. These programs right here, they're all in the main directory here, do not require an encoder. So all these programs right here can run on the free version of the Acorn CNC 12 software and do not require encoder input or constant surface speed. So you can see how those are programmed to run that way. If you do have an encoder and the pro version of the CNC12 software in this folder called Encoded Required are the same programs but set up with constant surface speed and feed per revolution. So you can open these programs and see how they're run. Now you're going to notice if I graph it, it's going to complain right now because I'm on the free version. And it said, hey, upgrade the pro. It's just letting us know that this particular program has a feature in it that's not supported by the free version of CNC12. So I'm going to go File, Load. Also, in the Millimeter folder is uh, two versions of the PON, PON Millimeter, and then PON Millimeter Encoder Required. So for you guys running uh, millimeters, there's two programs in there for you to play with, one that requires. So between all these sample programs and the fact that the Centroid Manual, the CNC 11 Operator Manual, has two lathe intercon tutorials in it that take you through step-by-step -step making this part here, every single step that you need to do in intercon to create a, a radius end on a part and then also a more complicated part lay the intercon tutorial this is all in chapter nine so please uh, open up this manual print these pages out and teach yourself how to program intercon 
using these tutorials. This second tutorial is a little more, more complex. It has threading and grooving and profiling and uh, shows you how to do that. And once you can create a program like this in Intercon, you can pretty much do anything. The section also in this very same manual on setting up your part zeros and setting your tool offset library is done in a step-by-step -step fashion and is very good as well. So please uh, go check that out. That's pretty much it. Um, highly recommend that you all uh, use Intercon. Certainly if you're a beginner at lathe, um, CNC lathe programming and use because it's going to create proper G-code right off the bat. Good luck. Talk to you soon.